Hello, thanks for checking out my video. Today we are going to be working on some fine motor skills, bilateral coordination, visual motor integration, graded muscle force, and some core strength and postural stability by making a dragon that breathes fire. So as I'm making a dragon, I can use a paper towel tube, the inside of a paper towel, uh, the little cardboard tube here, I can use this if I have one. If I don't have one, that's okay. I can just continue to use my construction paper that I have. But the ultimate goal is to have this roll over like this eventually. And it might be easier if we have a little structure on the inside. So we can use a paper towel tube and cut the paper towel tube in half it was much much longer and I cut it in half so now I have half of the paper towel tube that I can use for my fire breathing dragon activity and if you have a paper towel tube and you are electing to use the the tube after you cut it in half you'll have half of it that you're gonna use for your dragon activity and the other half of it you can actually cut little triangles out on each side so cut a little triangle out on that side, flip it over, cut another triangle out on this side, and now you have a very easy to make pair of tongs that you can practice using a little grip and pinch strength and practice some graded muscle force. If you have these tongs and just use some Play-Doh, maybe even little crumpled up pieces of paper would work, but if I have just a little bit of Play-Doh here, losing some I can put that down maybe I can put a couple different different little chunks down there and then I can use this paper towel tube that I cut little triangles out just as some easy tongs to practice with some some graded muscle force and some grip and pin strength so if you're using the tube save the other half let's use this as a warm-up activity for our kids so we'll, we'll do a little warm-up with the the um, paper towel tongs, we'll call them. And then we can also use this just as a little break if we need to use it as a break. But we're gonna start with that, do a little warm up activity with either some crumbled up pieces of paper or your Play-Doh that you have, maybe 10 times or so. And then we will get into our dragon activity. So I'll go ahead and do my warm up activity really quickly. Maybe I'll get this paper and just kind of put it off to the side here, my scissors and glue and all my other materials that I'm gonna use for my dragon. I'll just put those off to the side and then I'll set up my, I'm gonna use Play-Doh and I have my paper tong, paper towel tong that I just made. And I'm going to set up all of my little Play-Doh chunks in a line horizontally across this page here and then I'm going let's see maybe I'll space them out a little bit more just to give myself a little bit of room and now I'm going to put my play-doh container on the top part of my visual field so not only am I going to be working on my vertical visual pursuits, but I'm also kind of working my way slowly along with some horizontal movement as well of my eyes. So I can do it that way. I can line them up all vertically and we can only work on vertical pursuits. Um, or I can also put them on my non-dominant hand side so I am having to consistently reach across the midline of my body. So whatever skill you would like to work on, whether they're a combination of the horizontal and vertical, exclusively vertical, or bilateral coordination, you now have that opportunity to choose. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it up like that and finish this warm-up activity. So I'm done with my warm-up activity, and I can put the top back on my Play-Doh container and put that off to the side, and I can use these materials again. I can use the um, 
paper towel tongs that we made and the Play-Doh again for just another quick little fine motor exercise if we'd like to. But for now, I'm going to get into this dragon. And we are going to make a tube from this green paper that is going to be the dragon's head and mouth. So I think for me, what I'd like to do is to start with that. I'd like to make this into a tube now so that it has a little bit of time to, uh, to dry. So I'm going to get all my other materials off of my table here, put those off to the side, and I'm going to use either a glue bottle or my glue stick. So if you're working on building up a little bit of grip and pinch strength, you might want to use this. If you are working on some fine motor skills, you may want to use something that uh, more represents kind of the grip you would use for a writing instrument. So we'll use the glue bottle today because I'd like to work on my grip and pinch strength and my graded muscle force. And I'm going to make this green paper here uh, stick on my my paper towel tube so I need to make sure that I have plenty of glue on it so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done now you can make shapes with your with your glue on your paper here or you can just kinda scribble along I think maybe I'm just going to go along the outside and make a border like a large rectangle And then I'm going to, I think I'm just going to um, work on some vertical line strokes here, but I'm going to use the glue, so I'm just going to go from the top to the bottom, maybe three or four times. I'm using some good bilateral coordination skills here as I'm uh, holding down my paper so it doesn't move too much. Let's see here. I'll do a couple more. And then we can even work on some kind of some bilateral coordination skills this way. We're actually scanning our, um, we're using our visual motor skills to scan across the, the visual field here. Um, each one of these is intersecting another line, which can be kind of some difficult, uh, a difficult task for some kids to do. And we're moving all the way across our visual field. So I'm going to practice that too. I'm just going to go all the way across, and I have a visual target here of, it's kind of like a warning sign, like don't go past the screen, so we'll stop right there. And I'm going to do it maybe one more time here. And you can fill in your grid. You can leave it like that. I'm going to leave mine like that and put my glue off to the side. And then I'm going to roll my paper towel tube along this hopefully it sticks or I can kind of help it along I guess here we go it's starting to stick and I'm just gonna roll this thing over roll it this way and then hopefully it'll stick on itself alright perfect it did so now I need to put this off to the side so it can dry a dry a uh, dry a little bit. See, I got a little extra glue there. I'll just kind of put that on there, seal it up, and then I'm going to put this off to the side, and we're going to work with the red, orange, and yellow paper. So I'm going to grab my paper, construction paper, and these are going to be uh, cut either into strips or maybe into little triangles, but we're gonna attach these to our green tube that we just made. And this will be the fire coming out of the dragon's mouth that we already made and is drawing right now. So you can choose, um, you know, these little strips or maybe if you wanna make shapes, you can maybe do a little bit of uh, practice here with a writing utensil. See, I'm really gonna only use half of this, so Maybe I'll just use this half over here to demonstrate some shapes. So if you wanted to do shapes like a triangle, uh, we can set out some visual cues. 
and then your student can come along, stabilize the paper, and trace along this line, connecting the dots, getting some good visual motor integration skills going, going from a horizontal line back to another diagonal line. Oops, I missed that one. And then we can cut out the, uh, the triangle there and use it as the, the fire. Or, I'll just flip this over. What I think I'd like to do, I think I'd like to make strips. So I'm going to take the paper. Yeah, I'm going to go this way here. And I'm going to do the same visual cues all the way along here for my student to trace. So then I'm going to have one here at the very end and maybe even a couple more to get started. Maybe I'll increase those visual cues. And then we're just going to trace along this line. Your student will be working on some good visual motor integration skills, connecting the dots all the way down, working on this vertical pen stroke. And then I think I'm going to do that again. And this time I think I'm going to do it over here with fewer visual cues so that they have to pursue just a little bit further from each cue to each cue and maybe even look ahead a little bit as they're finishing up this part of the stroke. Maybe they're already looking ahead over here and getting a little bit of visual motor integration skills there. And now we have our strips that we're going to use. We're actually going to cut this one a little bit, a little bit thinner. Um, but we can go ahead and pick up our paper and work on cutting. We can actually, we could probably even cut this one in half if we wanted. This one's a little thick. These can each be about a half inch or quarter inch or one inch, whatever you like, whatever works for you. I'm going to get about a half inch cut in here. And then I'm just going to cut along this visual cue. Maybe I want to make, um, kind of a little area for my scissors to to cut within so I can create another visual cue here along that line so I know that's about a half inch so I can I can cut within this half inch margin or I can continue to cut along the line I'm gonna continue to cut along the line and then I actually don't need this larger piece of paper so I'm just going to use this thin strip and I'm going to cut along the line again. And then we have uh, the orange parts of our fire breathing dragon. So I'm going to put the orange ones off to the side. We can determine later if we're going to need more. Um, and now I'm going to do the same thing with the red and the yellow. So I'm ready to start gluing in these red, yellow, and orange strips into my dragon, uh, I don't know, snout or nose. I don't know what, what you would call it there for dragons, but let's see here. I have one short, I'm one short on the orange, so you can cut another one if you want, or I think it'll be okay. But what we are going to do now is to kind of determine the skill level that your your child is is at here are they going to be able to glue along these thin strips if so we would glue maybe just a third of the way down on each strip and if not we can take this opportunity to maybe uh, have them work on some good bilateral coordination skills they can hold this tube and then also some good graded muscle force and some grip and pinch strength. They can put the glue down on the, the inside kind of lip here of this um, dragon mouth. So you get to decide which one is best for you and your, your student. For me, I think I'd like to maybe do these vertical um, strips here. So I'm going to put this off to the side. And maybe I can kind of spread these out just a little bit so there's more of a...
defined expectation here. And I'm not just spreading the glue all over these. I'm actually going to be using these now as a uh, visual cue for me to glue on. So now I have these arranged. And I'm going to, uh, maybe you want to add even an extra visual cue. So we're going to say, you know, maybe just draw a line across there so that they know when they get to that line, that's where you stop with the glue. So I'm just going to do that for a couple of these guys there. Make sure I have the glue open. And then I'm going to stabilize my paper with my non-dominant hand. And I'm just going to put just a little bit of glue from the top down to the bottom. Maybe you want to start here and go up to the top. That's fine. Whatever you'd like to do. And that actually worked better at the bottom from the top. And then I can uh, start gluing these into my dragon here. And what I'd like to see is some good bilateral coordination. So making sure that we're using our non-dominant hand and then these objects are pretty small and are going to require some some good fine motor skills and some manipulation with our dominant hand all the while we're going to have to problem solve how do we get this into our tube so we're really going to be working on some good skills look at i'm using my shifting abilities right now and now i'm going to pronate my hand over and stick this fire into the dragon's mouth and then I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that a couple more times. I think that we can push that in there, get another one. Uh oh, my fingers are full of glue now. So how am I gonna navigate that? This is all just good problem solving exercise. And I'm going to, whoop, look at that. Now I'm going to continue this and glue in the rest of these into my dragon's mouth. So it looks like the strips that I made only came out to about maybe half of what I need. So as these are drying, I think I'm going to do maybe a couple more of these strips and I have just the right amount of paper here to do that so I'm going to just use some scrap paper that I was using earlier and we're gonna do the same technique that we did last time we're gonna do more dots along the paper and then we are going to cut out little strips So I'm ready to start gluing in these fire strips into the dragon's mouth. And I'm going to set them up the same way that I did last time. That seemed to work out pretty well. I'll get this one out of the way for now. It seems a little thin. Maybe I'll get this one out too. So yeah, I think I made a couple too many. But you know, ultimately I was able to practice some good visual motor integration skills by tracing along my visual cues with a writing instrument and I was really also getting a lot of good practice in with my scissors as I was cutting all these strips out about a good six inch uh, vertical line there so that was good practice maybe a little bit more practice than I was intending but that's okay and now I'm gonna go ahead and put these uh, put the glue on the strips like I did last time Maybe a good two inches of glue on top should do the trick. Stabilizing the paper with my non-dominant hand. I'm working, actually what worked best for me last time, I'm just going to go from the bottom to the top so that the paper doesn't stick on my glue and come forward when I drag it. There we go, perfect. And now I'm ready to glue these strips back into the dragon's mouth. So I'd say the majority of my fire strips have dried or are mostly in place for my dragon's mouth here. And one thing I can do 
yeah I think that'll look all right one thing I can do is I can just kind of test to see if it's going to work uh, a lot of a lot of my students or clients that I work with uh, may not have the uh, you know the thoracic capacity to really have a big inhale and then to blow a nice strong breath all the way through this tube so maybe we can check to see if they can and if they can't what we might want to do we might want to eventually cut this in half or even even cut off more and then the distance that our breath will have to travel to make these move will be a lot less so we can do like a little test right now um, I think, you know, maybe a good way to test is to kind of get these close together. So I'm able to blow them like a dragon. I'm definitely blowing fire out of my mouth here. But yeah, if your student is not really able to do that, maybe we can even just cut this in half right now. Let's see if that works. I'm ready to do that. We'll cut that in half. We can get rid of that portion of our dragon's mouth. And then we can just use this short portion here to practice blowing a nice strong breath. So I'll try that right now. And yeah, I'm able to get a lot more of my breath through this tube, the small section of my tube, and to make it a real... A real fire so that's something you can do if your student doesn't have the uh, kind of the, the core strength or the thoracic capacity to really have that big breath in and blow out a big breath through this long tube you can just cut your tube in half and discard a portion of it and then we'll just have this small portion here and if you'd like to draw eyes on it you can otherwise I think for me I think I'm done so I'm going to go ahead and play with my fire-breathing dragon tube, and I'm going to give it maybe a good couple ten breaths. And as I do that, hopefully I will feel re-oxygenated and feeling very healthy and calm and ready for my next activity. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. Please feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions on how to implement these strategies with your student.